I met Dr. Drew, and then I was also inspired by his philosophy, his practices. So he brought in all these bags of goodies, and to us at that time, we did not know what they were. I mean, we, we saw it as trash, really, you know, like, but we were curious. And so it wasn't until he started taking out the toys, well, the, the materials, he started taking out the materials. I, I guess the way that he invited us to play, it, it was, they were all placed in, in different areas, and he challenged us to play with it. And so at the beginning, we're like, how do you play with just recyclable material? That was all new. That was all a new concept for us. So slowly, uh, we began to uh, play ma with materials and then they became treasures. Treasure, what's called, you know, we call them treasures now. He has a recyc recycling center where we're able to go and, and, you know, get many of his things and we bring him back to the school. And so the magical thing about these, these treasures is that they're open-ended, as you know now, and, and so there's just hundreds of possibilities. And so um, when we bring him into the classrooms, uh, we give them to the teachers and then now they also, they, they're excited to play with them to see not just what they will discover, but also what the children will discover. Because sometimes there's, there's equal joy in discover, that a, a child discovering something that you haven't discovered for yourself. These open-ended materials help them to create, to explore. And um, they, you can, you know, observe that how the, the way that they progress in their in their skills. We have recyclable materials in all our classrooms. We have um, we have open-ended natural materials. Uh, anything that that just expands the children's ability to be able to create to be able to manipulate, to be able to have a relationship for them to connect deeper understanding because they are trying to figure out the world. And so that's the medium that we use in order for them to be able to answer all these questions that they have. Oh, and teacher, you something funny about that right here. And then... I used to work with uh, traditional education and it, it's the traditional. This one is for letters, this one is for numbers, this one is for shapes, that's it. But if you have opening the materials, I can see how my creativity and my imagination is every day uh, improving, improving, because I need to think more. Through these materials, you have to think. That's the thing, you're not telling the children what to do, they have to think, they have to problem solve. You are, they are going to encounter problems as they, as they encounter these materials that they have no clue what they're about, or they want to build something and they have to figure out how to do it. You will see frustration and you will see those processes, those scientific processes that scientists used in order for them to problem solve, to think, to, to probe, to hypothesize, in order for them to come up with a solution or to invent something that they need. They're learning so many different things in each project that they do. Every day they've learned something new and they've somehow integrated math and science in all of their activities. Because if you go to my room at any time, you can see quiet, everybody is involved doing something. The materials offer that opportunity to, to manage their emotions. But it all started with an interest, and I think that an interest can become a passion, and you, a passion doesn't end on Friday. You have to continue that interest, and through that interest, because they're passionate about it, they are going to learn STEM skills. They are going to learn life skills. She started here about two years ago, so she was a little over three years old, and she can't wait to get to school. She just loves it here. Yeah, all weekend this past weekend she was doing addition and teaching me addition. Mm -hmm.
How many flowers is it? I think that's been the, the like one of the eye openers for us to to be able to give children the respect and the time that they need in order for them to process everything that goes through their mind when they're playing with these materials. I, I wish everybody could send their child to a school like this. It's just amazing. So for those companies that are already doing it, thank you, because we are already benefiting from their generosity and we want them to know that the items that they discard, they're not garbage. They are really treasure for us because it's not just for them to play. They also create art. They also create uh, pieces that are helping them develop their understanding of the world around them. But it's used in, in every single category. So we follow standards because we're in the state of Florida. We use them in math, for literacy, for science. And so it, they are of high value for our educational industry. If we had more businesses that would be able to um, donate, then we have more schools that would be involved in this type of um, education. And where it's open-ended, the child has unlimited potential, unlimited possibilities, unlimited, unlimited imaginations that they can decide what to do with that uh, materials. Because if you see what one and two year olds are capable of, then you can imagine what a child at the year four, when they're four or five can do. And so if a child at this age can do that, imagine what older children can do. They need many experiences with the same medium or with recyclable materials, open-ended materials to work in a way that's going to expand their experience, expand their imagination, expand their creativity. The more you do it, the better you get.